Hello and welcome to the next episode of All About Notes in Lightwave. In this episode, we talk about glass material. And because glass can have so many different looks and feels, I will split up this glass material series in about three or four separate tutorial pieces. In this first part, we're gonna be looking at tinted glass and how we can create a very nice looking realistic glass material for a glass, okay? So this glass model is from Grayscale Gorilla and I will use this model in this very simple scene here. So as you can see, I have this glass model and the same model is scattered over this plane. So when I select the plane and go into the properties, you can see that I used the instance generator to generate this glass model over and over again. Actually, I used the brush on surface. I used the brush mode and I used the paint and then I paint some glass models on the surface. So what I can do here to get a bit more interesting look is I can change the random size of every glass. So in this case, I just choose, I don't know, 80% minimum and 100% maximum, or maybe let's do 60% to get more variation. All right, so you can see that we have different size now here for every glass. So for this, we go into the surface editor and here is the glass material. I double click and I will use the principled BSDF node because I want to render this out with the native light wave renderer. You can follow along as well with the Octane or in other DCCs as well in every other renderer like Redshift, Arnold, Karma and whatever you use because the principles are always the same. Maybe some names are a bit different, maybe some functions are a bit different, but the principles are always the same. You could also use this presets here in the material components. So you can use one of those to create glass as well. But I found out if I bring up this GGX B TDF node, I have all the functions that I need for glass, but one specific function is missing here. And the function that I need is this transmittance distance. All right, so let's go with the principled BSDF. To go into the properties of this node, double click on it and it's opened this new window where you have all the parameters to work with. All right, so the settings that we need for glass are in this section here. Transparency, transmittance, color, transmittance distance and refraction index. We also will work with the roughness setting here and the specular value here as well. Maybe we can also add the clear coat and play around with the clear coat as well. All right, let's start with the first setting here, transparency, bring it up to 100 and voila, you have your glass material. This right away looks pretty good to me. The next setting that we want to change is this transmittance color. So you can see in default this is set to white. Let's double click and let's change this to, let's say a light blue color. Press OK. And you can see that nothing has changed. The reason for that is this transmittance distance. The transmittance distance is a value that allows the rays how far the ray can pass through a material and starts to bouncing and scattering the color. Here this distance is set to one meter, which is way too much, okay? So the rays passes through the whole glass and it get not the possibility to scatter around this glass. So what we have to do is we have to define the distance for this glass. And it depends on how big your object is, this value may change. But in this case, I type in 0 0.2, which is 200 millimeters. And you can see right away that it starts to tint the glass in blue. Let's go stronger. Let's type in 0 
All right, and now that looks much better. So it's a tinted glass and where the glass is thicker, it's getting darker and where the glass is thinner, the more light passes through. All right, this already looks pretty good. But now what we want is we want to have for each glass a different transmittance color. And how we can do that? We can use these values and we can drive those values within our note graph. And I show you how. Because we used instance scattered on the ground with the instance generator, we can access the values for every glass, we can use this instance info node. Double click and bring it into our scene. And then we want to drive this transmittance color here. Okay, so to change that, we need a gradient. And now we have this gradient. Double click on the gradient and we set up a gradient. So we choose the first color, which is our blue color here and make sure that we choose step, then create another color and let's choose a light green color. And let's say we want to have a yellowish color and maybe one that is kind of reddish. Let's choose one of this and set this to step as well. So now we have this four colors. And now what we have to do is we have to use this fixed random output to the input of the gradient and the color to the transmittance color input. All right, so now you see that we have randomly changed based on this gradient, the transmittance color for the glass. Some glasses has the same color and some has variations. The more instances you have, or the more color you add into your gradient, the more variation you will have. So we have to move these lines until we see a result that we like. So now I have a blue tinted glass, I have this reddish tinted glass, the yellow tinted glass, and this green tinted glass as well. So I have all four colors representing here. What we could do is we could add another color here let's say an orangey color and you can see that one glass is now this orangey yellowish looking glass. All right, so that looks pretty good to me, but we can make it even better and more realistic to look at. So something is missing and these are these micro details, smudges, scratches, imperfections in the glass to make it even more realistic. So let's do that. All right, so now what we want to have is we want to have a texture that drives the roughness of our glass. So we need imperfections textures, okay? And you will find some imperfection textures all over the place in the internet. The imperfections map that I use is from Grayscale Gorilla. Here is the Grayscale Gorilla Hub. And you can see that they come up with a bunch of, here you can see the glass that we use for this um, tutorial. In the collection, you can see that they have a bunch of textures for your needs, okay? So you can see surface imperfection smudges, surface imperfection strength, right? For the glass, you see this imperfections and all these maps are really, really good. If you want to have access to all these beautiful textures and materials, and in this huge library, join Grayscale Gorilla Plus. They also have a free account where you can download some free assets. And when you like, if it's worth for you, go ahead and buy it. Because, and I think you will not find any better resources for textures and materials and these bouquet maps and stuff like that then with Grayscale Gorilla. All right, so what do we want to use? We want to use these smudges, these raindrop imperfections for our glass. I already downloaded one of those and I click and drag this into my note tree and apply as an image, say yes. And here is our map. 
Okay, so the important thing is that double click on this map, go to the edit and change this color space from default to linear and linear. This you have to do with all grayscale values and normal maps. Set the color space to linear and linear. And now the representation is correct. And then we change this because this glass has already a UV map. We can choose the UV map here for the glass right there. To see the result in the viewport, the first thing what I do is I plug the color into the color and I turn off the transparency. So I can see in the viewport now how this texture will be applied. And you can see that it will apply quite nicely, but it's way too strong. I want to make it less intense. So this we can change in the image itself into edit, editing. And now let's bring down the brightness. Maybe increase a little bit of contrast. So now you can see that it's not so dominant and now we use the Luma channel and drive our roughness. Open up the principal BSDF again, turn on the transparency, close all the windows and see what we get. All right, so now you can see that this texture is applied to our roughness map and it's creating this detail on every glass. So now this is very strong, this effect, I know. So to reduce this effect a little bit more, you can go into the notes tree and play around with this setting. So let's make it a bit more dark right there. Maybe increase the contrast a little bit and then you can increase the gamma, right? And just play around with the settings until you find a liking of your material. All right, so now you can see that this effect is not so dominant anymore and it's creating these micro details and these little details, these little imperfections in the glass that makes the glass more realistic. So what we also can do is we go into the surface editor again and we use this texture here and we use the bump and plug that bump into the bump input double click on the principal BSDF and let's reduce this bump power, let's say to about 60% for now and see what we get. All right, and now you can see that this droplet standing out of the glass and you have some kind of droplets on the glass. Maybe this is a bit too strong. So I will reduce and play around with settings until I have something that I like. All right, so this looks pretty good. You can always play around with the settings I showed you in the editing of the texture to make the effect more dominant or less dominant. Play around with the settings until you find a, a great balance between imperfections in the glass and the glass itself. One big effect can have the lighting. Whenever you work with glass, the lighting is key. As you can see, I have two area lights that light up this scene. And right away, this looks pretty good. And I have some reflections, highlights in the glass, but something is missing. Use HDRI maps just to help and add even more details in the reflections and in the reflections of the glass and to create an even more realistic look. So let's go into the light properties and make sure that in the environment light, you have set the texture environment and you have an HRI into your environment. All right, that's the end of this first episode of this glass tutorial series. In the next episode, we talk about different glass types. So we talk about frosted glass, scratched glass, brushed glass, and an all kind of different glass looks that you can create. If you have any questions or you want to give me some feedbacks, please let me know in the comments. 
So stay tuned for the next episodes. I hope you like this content. And thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And see you next time. Bye, everybody.